All right, guys, welcome to the first episode of what I'm calling Detail and Chill. Name subject to change. Uh, This is going to be more just a laid back me talking, so you don't really have to be paying attention if you just want to put it on in the background and listen to me ramble. That is what this is for. I'm not gonna specifically be going over any type of techniques or anything like that. This is more just me talking about the business and whatever questions the people on Instagram have asked me. I'll be uh, moving the camera around a little bit, but like I said, this is gonna be mainly for you to put on in the background and just listen to. But uh, I got these wash pads from the rag company. Normally I just do a one bucket wash, but uh, I wanted to try them out. So I dusted off my rinse bucket and going to give them a shot and see if I like them. And if I do, I may start using them. I don't know, we'll see. So I asked on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll leave it in the description box below, ask people to ask me some questions. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna answer some of those questions and talk about um, my perspective of the detailing business and maybe where I see detailing going in the future. All right, let me get this camera turned around here. All right, so one of the first questions I got asked was how do I grow my customer, my clientele base, and which is a good question. And uh, how I did that was when I first started out, I have a buddy who um, owns a local nonprofit, started a local nonprofit called Bearded Warriors, and they help local veterans in the Huntsville community, Huntsville area. And I reached out to him and asked if he wanted to collaborate and, uh, you know, share some of my social media posts and I'll share his. And that's honestly how I got started off growing my clientele base. And that's something I still do. I still uh, collaborate with local nonprofits and uh, give back a portion of my profits to them. That has been a good way for me to get my name out there without spending a lot of money in marketing. Also, I go to local car shows and cars and coffee. And actually, Andre, the owner of this Mercedes, that's how I met him. I went to a local, my local cars and coffee and he was there and he stopped by my booth and uh, we got to talking and next thing you know, the very next day, he was bringing this car to my house for me to take some PPF off and the detail and get it looking good. Um, and then he's been a, one of my best customers ever since. So just getting yourself out there, going to cars and coffee is a great way. Um, also partnering with local nonprofits you know, charities, giving back. There's a quote, and I'm probably gonna butcher it, but it's, I think it's, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. So remember that. These have got to be the most pain in the butt wheels to clean. If you've ever cleaned wheels on a Mercedes GTS, you probably know, but they just put so much brake dust off. It is insane. All right, another question that I got was asking why there's so much price difference in ceramic coatings by different detailers, right? So I had somebody send me a price request quote on ceramic coating a a newer, um, AT4 Duramax Sierra and my 
my price starts at 1850 normally for my three year ceramic coating and then 2250 for my five year. And my prices include um, paint correction, the ceramic coating itself, a one year glass coating, a one year wheel coating, paint depth record. So I'll take measurement of your paint depth and then send you a PDF file. Um, so it's not just the ceramic coating. And so I gave him the pricing and he said, well, the guy I talked to earlier says he'll do it for $600. And I wanted to be like, there's no way that you're getting that same service from a reputable licensed insured detailer for $600. And he told me who it was and I looked him up and sure enough, <laughs> not a licensed detailer. And he was using a basically a paint sealant and then trying to pass it off as being a ceramic coating. So whenever you're dealing with quote unquote detailers, um, and make sure that they know what they're even talking about and what they're doing, right? There's no reputable detailer out there that um, respects themselves enough that is going to be doing paint correction, ceramic coating for, you know, less than twelve, fifteen hundred dollars starting off on a car and it goes up from there, right? It's just not going to happen. And if you do find somebody who is super cheap, there's a reason, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's always a reason why somebody's super cheap. So I guess I can use that to transition into talking about the difference between detailers out here. So you've probably seen on your local Facebook groups, people advertising details, $50 inside and out. <laughs> Those are not details. You're not getting a detail inside and out for $50. It's just not happening. <clears throat> for a full detail, I spend almost $35 in chemicals to do a full detail, an average full detail. So what makes you think that you're going to get a full detail of quality service, quality products for $50 when it takes somebody, you know, $35 to do a quality full detail. It's not happening. There's a huge difference between a detailer and a car washer, right? I see people all the time looking for detailers on the Facebook groups or whatever, and they're like, oh, I want somebody to detail my car that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Well, any professional detailer, which at that point, if somebody is detailing your vehicle, you want a professional detailer who has business insurance, business license, because anything can go wrong, right? It sucks and it could happen to your vehicle, but stuff happens and you know, these fly by the night detailers. Don't have insurance, don't have a business license. So if something were to go wrong and they damage your, let's just say your brand new AT4 
Silverado, fairly expensive truck, you know, optioned out, you're probably looking close to six figures. And if they damage that, you think they're gonna be there for a $10,000 repair bill or whatever, you know, whatever it may be, a $5,000 repair bill, right? Uh, no, <laughs> you're never gonna hear from them again. <laughs> so, you know, that's gonna be on you, you know, your own, your own money to repair your vehicle that you didn't even do. All right, next question I got asked was what it's like to detail at Barrett Jackson. So if you guys don't know, I went to Barrett Jackson back in January and actually I'm going to Scott, uh, not Scottsdale, going to West Palm Beach here in a couple of days to detail at the West Palm Beach Barrett Jackson. And I will say Barrett Jackson and Scottsdale in January, the big show, the one that's like two weeks long is a ton of hard work. Um, you know, people don't realize how much work goes into getting those cars ready for show. Um, luckily, Adams Polishes has a really, really good team of people and we work really well together, but it's definitely, it's fun, but it's not all play. Um, we work our butts off for two weeks straight in January, um, long days, you know, early mornings, late nights. Um, I think I ran a polisher for probably 60 hours for the two weeks I was there. Like it's, it's a lot of work sitting on the ground, the concrete, um, but it was really fun and I made some really good connections and excited about future shows, excited to see what West Palm Beach is all about, excited to see all those California boys uh, struggle with the humidity. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it's a good time. Um, excited to see what kind of cars, you know, the difference in cars between the Scottsdale show and the West Palm show. And if you're interested in knowing how I got that opportunity, I will leave um, my video I made talking about how I got that opportunity. I will link it in the description below. You can go watch that. Uh, I think it's a short video. It's like maybe five minutes or so talking about how I got the opportunity to go in detail at Barrett Jackson, detail some of the most prestigious and desirable cars out there. Super, super cool honor. Um, very grateful for the opportunity. But moving on. All right, next question I got was asking how I came up with my pricing when I first started. And that's a good question, especially if you're somebody who is looking to start a detailing business. Um, the main thing that goes with that is, or a couple of things is your location. So are you in a big city or are you in a small town? That's kind of play into how much you can charge. If you're in a big city, you may be able to charge a little bit more than somebody who's in a small town. And also something that take into consideration is how much experience do you have detailing are you just starting out do you have a couple years um, so those those are the two main factors when you're trying to come up with your pricing plan but whenever i started i did a little bit of market research i looked at other detailers in my area and got a rough idea on how much they were charging and the services that they offered and then I came up with my pricing structure. Um, at the time, I had an idea 
in my mind of how much I wanted to make per hour. So, and then by more practicing more and doing some friends and family's cars, I figured out how long it took me to do a certain vehicle, right? Like a sedan or a car or a small SUV, a truck, um, all that stuff. And I was able to get my pricing together uh, based on that. Um, when I started off, I really was looking to make somewhere around $50 an hour. And obviously the more you get comfortable detailing vehicles, the quicker you'll be and the more money you'll make per hour. Now it's, it's up in that $75, $100 an hour for around detailing. Um, paint correction, ceramic coating, stuff like that, PPF. You know, I'm, I'm looking to get at least 100 to 150. You know, anything that takes extra skill, you should be charging more for. You know, if you're doing, if you're doing any type of paint correcting or ceramic coating, that's a specialty skill. So that's something that somebody is reaching out to you because they can't do. You know, you need to price that accordingly depending on how much skill you have in it and the knowledge. Um, you know, you need to respect your time that you're gonna have. Not only doing the skill or the service, but the time and the money you invested to learn it, right? So if you go to any type of class um, or course or you buy any type of course, um, you know, that takes money and it takes time to, to go through the course and go through the class. So you need to be, you know, You need to be paid for the knowledge that you're, you went out and got. Oh, that's nice. That water's a little chilly this morning. Man, this car is beautiful. It's brilliant blue is the color. Absolutely love it. The owner, Andre, super nice guy. Like I said, for one of my best customers. This car is getting wrapped soon, which <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed in. Just because it's such a beautiful color, but I understand why. There's a couple other brilliant blue GTSs around the area. And he doesn't want to be like everybody else so i completely understand why this car does have system x renew their paint sealant on it so that's why it is the soap and the water is just running off of it all right another question that i got asked was asking about how I deal with competition. And uh, <laughs> my answer, I always kind of hate answering this question just because I'm not a, a cocky person, but I honestly don't think I have any competition. What I mean by that is I don't really pay attention to anybody, any other detailers. Um, I know I'm one of the only ones in this area, especially mobile, that is fully licensed, insured. Um, I'm the only one in the state of Alabama that is certified Adam's detailer, Adam's polishes detailer. Um, I'm the only one in Alabama that 
goes to Barrett Jackson, not just Huntsville, in the whole state that goes to Barrett Jackson, the detail at Barrett Jackson. Um, so when it comes to competition, I truly believe I don't have any. I don't think anybody in my area is going to deliver the same quality of detail, the same customer service. Um, so I don't, I don't worry about anybody, to be honest with you. Let's hit this front bumper. Actually, I'm going to rinse this whole thing off and then respray the front bumper. I'm fairly confident that in my area, I'm one of the most passionate detailers around. I don't really have much uh, quote unquote play time, I guess. I'm not actually detailing. Um, I'm watching videos, learning from other detailers, um, watching videos on how to optimize my website. Uh, marketing strategies um, you know I don't really watch just a whole bunch of just random TV I'm very uh, business oriented always trying to better the business for not just myself but for my customers I want my customers to have the best detailing experience that they could possibly have. Like, I want my customers, if they ever get a detail from somebody else, to be like, dang, that kind of sucked. Like, I didn't get the same experience as I did with Detail Lab. And that's my goal on every single detail is to deliver that type of quality work and customer service uh, to my customers. And Andre, the owner of the, this Mercedes, is actually a really good example. When I paint corrected, or actually before I even paint corrected his this GTS, um, I just got the PPE off, PPF off of the front bumper and did a detail, inside and out detail. And I went ahead and took paint depth measurements before he came and picked it up and I sent them to him and you know he told me that he never had that type of detail service ever with a detailer and that's what I'm talking about like that's the kind of service I'm trying to give my customers every time All right, let me check and see if we have any other questions Girlfriend asked, are you filming? Yes, I am. Um, what's going on with my sprayer? Can't have nothing nice, I'll tell you what. Can you even see me? I don't know if you can even see me. All right, let's get this thing dry. The sun's coming out. It's not really warm but it doesn't take much to start drying, drying water on this paint, I'm trying out a new drying towel and uh, I don't know about it. <laughs> All right, somebody asked, it's a good question, what my next venture in detailing is going to be. Um, so some of y'all may know that I, I got certified in paint protection film, BPF. So that's my next kind of venture. Um, just waiting on the right timing really to get started. Um, it's a hefty investment. You know, I gotta buy a plotter, um, plotter, computer, software. Like it's not just a, a quick get going type of venture. 
Um, but that's the, that's the next venture. And I have some other stuff in the works that um, can't really talk about. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna wait until the details are squared out before I speak of them. Um, I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but if everything works out, uh, I have a gigantic business opportunity that I'm very, very much looking forward to. You know, I wanna make sure it works out for all parties um, before I before I really speak about it, you know? Man, I am convinced that people who design cars have never cleaned a car a day in their life. All right, quick battery change. All right, let me check and see if there's another question on here. Let's see, something I haven't talked about already. <laughs> Are aliens real? Sure, we'll, <laughs> we'll dive into it. I believe they are. Um, now, they may not be the green aliens that we all know and love, but, you know, we don't even know how big the universe is. Um, I think it's kind of... Um, high class of us to say we're the only things in existence in the entire universe. You know, we may be the aliens, you know, who knows? But, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely think there's something, uh, something else out there for sure that's way more intelligent probably than us, which <clears throat> seems to be not very hard lately, but I won't get into the super controversial topic of moon landing <laughs> and this one. Alrighty, let me clean up real quick and then we'll do a quick vacuum. Let's get this thing vacuumed out. All right guys, I hope you're enjoying this style of video. Uh, it's something I just came up with on a whim. Uh, I figured it'd be cool to answer some questions. Maybe y'all get to know me a little bit. I'm gonna get this thing vacuumed out though and I'll answer some more. Alrighty, righty, gonna hit the inside of these windows. The, something's on the inside over here on the passenger side. This windshield is not the easiest to clean. Honestly, the inside of this car is not the easiest. It's very tight, but that's all right. Andre keeps the inside of this thing really clean. And I did ceramic coat the whole interior for him, so it's super easy to clean up now. Getting out of this thing is a different story. Ooh, let me find another question for y'all. Ooh, this is a good question. And I've, I probably kind of touched on it earlier, but the question is, what's the most annoying thing in the detailing industry? And that would have to be the fly-by-night detailers uh, that claim they're a detailer. They offer $50 detailing packages. And then whenever you have customers who have used people like that in the past and they reach out to you for a price quote and you hit them with a three, $400 price quote, they freak out and then kind of get defensive or whatever. And most of the time they say, well, the last guy only charged $50. And then I'm like, well, why don't you call the last guy? And then they're like, oh, he's not in business anymore. He doesn't do it anymore. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's why. No, he was not making any money. You know, it's a full detail. Like I said earlier, I have probably $35 in materials that go into that. 
and you know, let's just say it's on a car, like let's just, I'll use this Mercedes as an example. The, my initial full detail on this thing took probably four hours and it has a lot of nooks and crannies. And so, you know, somebody's not going to charge $50 for four hours of work. <laughs> like, you see, that doesn't make any sense. And that's, if people aren't going to make money charging $50 for four hours of work. Like, they're a car washer. They're not a detailer. All right, guys, that's all the time I have for today. Thank y'all so much for being a part of this. If you like it, make sure you subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this style of video, and I will definitely make some more. Thanks, guys.